Hi guys, it's Yaya and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing the highly requested sulfate free shampoo. For dry hair, shampoos with sulfates can be very drying and stripping to the hair which can cause damage. So a lot of people look for sulfate free shampoos as their solution. However, some sulfate free shampoos are not very effective in removing buildup and oil and dirt and can leave your hair feeling icky and dirty, okay? We also want bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. It just seems to me that a lot of sulfate free shampoos are just missing that rich lather that we know and love. So, so let's see if we can find the balance. We want an effective cleansing shampoo that's not stripping and has a really good lather. Let's do it. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Before we get started, let's introduce our star ingredient, which is MSM. MSM is methyl sulfonyl methane. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And it is known for being rich in sulfur. This has anti-inflammatory properties that can help to relieve itchiness and dandruff and other elements of the scalp. For the hair, it boosts elasticity, it helps to strengthen the keratin in the hair, and overall help with length retention, which may be why some people believe it directly helps with hair growth. Now that introductions are out of the way, let's go ahead into the making of this MSM shampoo. This shampoo is pretty easy to make. There are three phases, A, B, and C, which translate to the water phase, surfactant phase, and oil phase. For those of you who want to know about the surfactant active matter, it is 10%, okay? Starting with phase A, this is where we would add our water phase ingredients, which will include rose hydrosol, MSM, our thickener, and our preservative. For solutions that have a large water phase like shampoos, it can be difficult to blend in essential oils, so instead you use your hydrosol in order to get a nice fragrance. I am also using the rose hydrosol to dissolve the MSM crystals. These dissolve best in hot water, so you can either heat up the rose hydrosol before adding the MSM or place it on the stove on low heat. Just make sure to check the temperature because depending on what preservative you use, you don't want it to get too high. For me, I'm using Liquid Dermal Plus and it gets finicky of right around 120 degrees. So you want to make sure your temperature does not go above that. Since we have such a large water phase, you want to make sure that your preservative is water soluble and that it is broad spectrum and will protect against all bacteria, fungus, anything that it could be introduced to. For our last ingredient in the water phase, we're adding Garcat. It is a thickener, one of my favorite thitheners actually for shampoos and conditioners because uh, it also has conditioning properties and it thickens up pretty well. The only thing is that you do have to lower the pH below 7. All you have to do is use a citric acid solution. Just one drop, usually two, is enough to bring it below 7 and then you will see that it will thicken up the water phase. All right, that's it for our water phase. Now we can move on to phase B, which is our surfactant phase. It's the phase that's gonna give us all our bubbles and rich lather and foam and cleansing properties. So let's jump right into the first ingredient. The very first one is our primary surfactant, which is alpha olefin sulfonate. I'm butchering all of these names, so just bear with me. Um, but this is our primary cleansing agent. It's the one that's gonna give you the most lather because it's a foam booster. It also increases the viscosity of your shampoo. It's going to help to decrease and remove dirt without drying your hair. It is also a very mild cleansing agent, which makes it the perfect option for a sulfate-free shampoo. Our secondary cleansing agent is Coco Metapropyl Betaine. This is a very, very mild cleansing agent. Although it is mild, it will help to boost the foam. It also helps to increase the viscosity of your shampoo. It has conditioning properties, anti-static properties. Overall, it's going to make the shampoo milder. Even though our anionic cleansing agent is already mild compared to other anionic surfactants, uh, it's still going to work like these two surfactants basically have 
a synergy look how well they thicken together like i don't think i've ever seen this before these two just love each other and they're just the perfect match for this so Fae free shampoo all right let's move on to our last phase which is phase c which can be considered the oil phase in a way in this phase we have our emulsifier and our emollient so i wanted to incorporate a oil to the shampoo in order to give it some more moisturizing and softening properties for those who have drier hair type in order to add the oil we need an emulsifier our emulsifier is going to be peg 40 hydronated castor oil this emulsifier is just superb because it's going to help to incorporate a low amount of oil into a whole bunch of water without separating or destabilizing the solution. This way we can incorporate the moisturizing and softening properties of the coconut oil into our shampoo. And that's it. Now we have phase A, phase B, and phase C completed. Now all we have to do is bring them all together. This is where I kind of messed up, okay, because I added phase B and phase C first, I was hoping that they would just kind of blend together and create this soft, silky solution that I could then add easily into the water phase. Um, that just did not happen, you guys. So I ended up having to put it on the, so on the stove and I had to heat it a little bit in order to thin out the viscosity so that it will be easier to add into my water phase. Now, we're not using any tools, you guys. I'm not using the immersion blender because it's just, it would ruin the shampoo. The best tool to use is like an overhead steerer, but if you're at home and you don't have that, you just have to do the best you can to blend these ingredients effectively. Usually adding one ingredient at a time, one phase at a time, is the best way to do it. So don't follow my example. What you should do is to add phase B into phase A and blend well with your spatula. And then you want to incorporate phase C into the A and B mixture. This will ensure that you have blended and incorporate all of your phases effectively, okay? The way I did it still turned out perfectly fine, but there is an easier way to do it, especially when you don't have the proper tools, okay? The method in which you do things affects the outcome, so just be careful, okay? All right, so the next thing that I did was check the pH. I did do that off camera, you guys. I totally forgot to record it, but all you have to do is take two grams of your shampoo, put 20 grams of water in it to dilute it, and then use your pH meter in order to check the pH. The shampoo was naturally at like a 7.1, which is okay for my preservative because it's effective between three and eight, but I still wanted it to be lower. So I did use citric acid solution in order to bring it down to like a 4.98. Remember, microorganisms cannot survive in an acidic environment. So this is why you wanna lower the pH of your shampoo. All right, so after all that mixing, you can see that it definitely is starting to look like a shampoo now and is starting to thicken up slightly. It is looking great, but it's still a little foamy. So I allowed it to sit for a little while and it started to clear up because you've seen before it was more opaque. It was more white. But now, as you can see, it's starting to clear up a whole lot. And this is mostly because we don't have many oils or butters in there. And PEG 40 also helps to create a... A clear solution as well so depending on what kind of look you you want for your shampoo you may have to add different ingredients to get that all right so I did let this sit overnight in order to clear up the bubbles and this was what I was left with absolutely beautiful this is the shampoo of our dreams you guys it is so silky smooth and I think the consistency is just perfect it also is so slippery you guys the glide on this shampoo is insane and it also has flash foam properties so as soon as it touches water i mean even before it touches water it is already foaming up and giving us bubbles 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 you guys you hear me i had to be very very gentle when staring because it was just creating bubbles it's amazing it's absolutely amazing not to mention that the surfactant active matter was on the lower end for shampoos. It was right at 10% with the range being all the way up to like 15%. So this is a milder shampoo and yet it's still giving us insane amount of bubbles, you guys. I think it is a successful sulfate free shampoo that is non-drying and full of lather, okay? So in order to use this, if you have oily hair, you can use this almost on a daily basis. You may have to actually adjust to this shampoo as far as getting that extra cleansing feeling that you want 
when you have oily hair. Now, if you have dry hair or prone to flaky scalp, then you should probably use this maybe twice a week. So even though it is milder and it's not going to dry out your hair as much as a regular sulfate shampoo, you still don't want to overdo it. It is still a cleansing shampoo. So I wanted to give you guys a demonstration, but my hands just wasn't doing it for me this time. I really wanted to show it to you guys on some hair. So I brought out a wig I've had for about six months now. I don't use many oils on it, but I do use a lot of mousse on it. So I'm going to show you guys what the shampoo is working with because it really has some magic to it. But first, if you're someone who enjoys learning like I do, you should definitely check out Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for almost a year now and I absolutely love it. I have been able to enhance skills that I already had while also learning new skills that I didn't even know I wanted to learn. This is because the site is so easy to navigate and the classes are so easy to understand. It's just so easy to keep learning and becoming more creative each and every day. So a lot of you know I have been looking into making soaps as of late. So I've been on there a lot looking up different tools and skill sets that I would want to utilize once I start making my soaps. One class by Seema Chowdhury definitely caught my attention because she is a chemist. Not only does she go step by step telling you how to do the formulation, she also has a video tutorial where she goes through each step and shows you exactly how she makes shampoos, conditioning bars, scrubs, and other hair and skincare products. So this is why Skillshare is so awesome. You can have the confidence in knowing that you're learning from experts in their own field. So if you're looking to invest in your future or just learn a new skill, try out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box will get one month free of Skillshare. All right, now it's time to test out this shampoo. As I said, I had this wig for about six months. Most of the time I only use just conditioner on it and of course I'll use my mousse. If you have ever had a curly human hair wig, you already know they can get really dry and frizzy and just at some point unsavable. So I really wanted you guys to see how gentle this shampoo is, but that you still get a wonderful bubbly lather and that it actually cleanses the hair really well. You can tell it's not stripping because the hair feels so soft and conditioned and it has a nice shine to it. Instantly the curls are clumping together and it's easy to detangle with. That's not really something you hear from shampoos a lot, okay? So as you can see here, like it's cleansing the hair, but it is still super soft and not stripping at all. I didn't show you guys the residue from this wash because ill, <laughs> but trust me, you guys, it definitely worked some magic and cleansed this wig like never before, but it still left it soft and I was able to condition and style my wig as usual. And the curls were frizz free, shiny and soft. All right, you guys, that is the end of the video. What did you think about the shampoo? Please leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer any questions you may have about the ingredients, the formulation, etc. Okay. Also, you guys, leave a comment down below what other type of shampoos you would like to see. I will be doing many, many more. Okay. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can keep up with the upcoming videos. There's many, many more to come. Okay. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah. Wanna release it, wanna release it